Have lunch with the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone with you well. Salutations and hope for the out there. Back him to the dock him that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the preaching month, this week's in transit is going to be entitled The Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahushai always makes a way. All right. Um, and it's inspired by, you know, something personally in my, in my, in my life that happened recently. You know, and I, even brothers, we're one body. You know what I'm saying? We're one body. It's like brothers all go through the same things, you know what I'm saying, and um, I know there's times, you know, there's a lot that weigh heavy on, you know, some of this uh, particular circumstances um, of just living in Babylon, things that you're dealing with, you know, feel like you, your back is against the wall, and how are you going to get out of this situation, that situation, how is this going to happen, how is this going to play out, but, you know, the, the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, of course, in a theatrical manner, always narrowly makes a way for brothers to get through things, you know, and it's the same thing that went for all the prophets, you know, uh, first thing that comes to mind, is Elijah, you know, when the, the famine happened, you know, and he was fed by ravens, you know, he had, he had ravens that fed him, you know, he had angel food that carried him 40 days and 40 nights, um, the, the list goes on, but as, the, as it is written in the scriptures, you know, whoever is, was, has ever trust in the Lord and was forsaken by him. When you read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, it, it speaks about that, you know, putting your trust in your heart, and not your own understanding. And that and all, that all comes down to faith. Faith, Hebrews 11 and 1, you know. And, and when you read Hebrews 11 and 6, I believe it also says that it's impossible to please the Lord without having faith, you know. And the Most High is in control of everything, all circumstances. Um, all tribulations, all deliverances, all that really is in the hands of the Lord. So when we get pushed into a corner, he's the one that pushes us in the corner. And he wants to see what you're going to do, who you're going to cry out to. And, you know, you cry out to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. You, you, you make your, your plea to him about your plight. And, um, you know, with faith, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai will deliver you through a particular circumstances, man. And right now, I already know through the spirit that brothers are going through it. And it only makes sense as we edge closer to the end, because we're in end time prophecies now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the Marvel movie, we're in the end game now, right? So with, with that in mind, all right, Yahweh Bashim is is testing our faith, you know, the brotherhood, who's, 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 who, who's gonna have that integrity, you know what I'm saying? Who's gonna be disciplined? Who's going to be not willful? You know? Who's going to listen to the men that I've set up? Because that's a that's a very important order. You know what I'm saying? So, as we edge closer, whatever particular um, things that men struggle with, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is going to test your weaknesses. All right? That's the part of the fire. But what does it say in the, second, um, the book of Ecclesiastes? It's the second chapter, which is a staple to this truth and, and being built up. All right? It says, you know, don't make haste. You know, when Yahweh Bashim Yahshua is putting through trials and errors, do not make haste, but cleave onto him even more. You see? The Hebrew word, the bak. So we have to cleave onto Yahweh Bashim Yahshua even more, and it almost comes naturally, all right, when we're in our different particular plights in, in life, man. You see what I'm saying? And when, it, and when it might seem like, you know, all is lost, all is like, damn, how is this going to happen? How is that going to happen? You know, guess what? Yahweh Bashim Yahshua will take care of you, you know? And that's what the Lord told the disciples. He's like, look, the lilies get, you know, the lilies and the different flowers and the, the birds, they all get taken care of by the Mosai. You see? You know? So if they get taken care of by the Heavenly Father, how much more his servants? And what's serving the Lord? Teaching the word, going to these prophecies, letting our people know who they are, letting these devils even so their particular judgment coming up which is that of destruction you know and slavery you know not diluting the truth going out there and teaching 100 percent truth you know that's working and serving the lord that's being the servant of the most high all right not making rap videos and all that type of bullshit or have the sisters making rap songs that's not what it's about you know it's, it's about going to these scriptures going on the highways and byways and prophesying you know first and foremost 
That's the, that's the number one gift. The gift, the number one gift is prophecy. You know, along with the, again, a part of the work is being charitable to your brother. You know, what I'm saying not just financially, but you know, whatever way, you know, whatever resources uh, you have to build a brother up. And the number one form of brotherly love is really teaching. You know, teaching these scriptures. You know, lifting up a brother's spirit by teaching the word, of which I'm hoping through the spirit and power of the Lord. The words that I'm speaking now up in a few brothers, man. That are going through it and you feel like, damn, you know, like, trust me, we've all been there, we're all going through it, we know what it's like, but again, Yahweh Shimon Shah is to forsake those, all right, that put um, their trust in him, you see? And that's what it's about. And again, this is a microcosm of what's going to happen. When all hell breaks loose, you know, you might have. You know, you have brothers that have children. That might weigh heavy in your mind. Like, when all hell breaks loose, Jacob's trouble, um, you know, your kids, um, you know, your family. Because it's contrary to popular belief. We're not all, like, that have bad blood with all our family members. You know, there's certain brothers that have good relations with their parents or good relations with their brothers and sisters, whatever, that's super tight with them. But they're not, they might not necessarily have the truth, but they're, like, helpful. They're, like, helpful to the prophets. You know, they don't give you hell. You and Jams, they work with you, or you know, to help you get a job, whatever it might be. You see, so it's not always like, oh man, this guy's a goddamn demon because he's not in the truth. He's my family member. There's times they're just not in the truth, you know. But who knows? They, the Lord could have mercy upon them for them being good towards you. You know what I'm saying? Which they was part of the elect anyway. If that's the scenario. But yeah, you know. So those, you know, we pray. You know, we pray for. Our, I know I personally pray for my mother and father. You know. That they make it, even though they're not necessarily, um, they might talk shit sometimes, you know, but overall, I pray for my mother, my father, you know what I'm saying? So, you, you know, you like, man, you know, when all hell breaks loose, Lord willing, you know, be how about she, me, I'm trying to take care of them, but if that's not the case, you know, that's not the case, you know, you also have to have, um, I would say a cold heart, man, really, be, like a heart that's almost like emotionless at times, you know, because if you get into your feelings about things, that could that could that could serve your judgment in the wrong way, you see. Because the scriptures tell you, um, the heart is desperately wicked with your minds, your emotions, and shit like that. You know, you might feel a certain way, but you know, as how as the Lord said in the book of Isaiah, His thoughts is far above our thoughts, and so is His ways above our ways. So there's certain circumstances that you might not necessarily um, feel emotions feel is right. But guess what? Yahweh Shem Yahshai knows what's best for us, man. There's, there's so many shit that we done been through that we like, damn, Lord, why did I have to play out that way? But guess what? Yahweh Shem Yahshai knows what's best for us, man. You know, even if we don't see it, see? Even if we don't agree with it, it's still best for us because that's the Lord. The Lord is the one that's molding us and, 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 and putting that fire on us to get, to get rid of the impurities. That's in the book of Proverbs 25 and 4, you know? Um... It says, take away the dross from the silver, and they shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Right? How do you take away the dross or the impure dross or the impure metals? That's on a that's on a precious metal with heat. All right, the heat represents uh, trials and tribulation. You see, because when you read the book of Zechariah 13, 8, 9, and ten, all right, when it says, you know, I shall bring the third part to the fire or the one third to the fire. Yes, it's going into nuclear fire, but I, again, that's also linking with what I quoted earlier, the second. Uh, in, in the book of Ecclesiastes or, or Sirach, the second chapter, all right, the furnace of adversity. Acceptable men are tried in the furnace of, of adversity, all right. So, fire, all right, which is a cleansing agent, all right, not just water, fire is also a cleansing and purifying agent, all right. It's synonymous often in the scriptures with adversity because that's how men are, are cleansed and they've been through. And the Lord told, told us that He was going to try our reins and try our minds. You see, so you have to have a tough mind that when shit, when you go through shit, you know, you're able to be level-headed. Like, um, you know, I play football, right, and I always like to use football. A quarterback has to be able to have a level head because there's so much going on. There's so much information he has to know, pressure on him. So you have to be able to think and respond with things very quickly. So the mind is very important. But he's not the most, let's say, biggest or strongest uh, physical player. But his mind make him one of the most important people on the field, and, and one one of the most important people in, in the game. Like I believe it's the same for a point guard. 
in basketball. Like he's the one that you know he's not necessarily point guards aren't necessarily the most biggest or fastest guys. Don't don't get it wrong. They all have athletic, you know, at quarterbacks are athletics have athletic athleticism so there's a point guard all right but again their mind is what makes them the most important per se it's not that they're the size or the speed or whatever it's the mind that these guys are will, willing to under the under, under the vision all right keep their mind stable and make sound decisions you know and that's how they get to start a job so it's the same <clears throat> with men of the lord all right how well can you maintain yourself your mind your composure all right stay stable and firm in the truth under the rigid under stress under things not going your way under a, a, um a, an amalgamation of different problems you know what i'm saying how well and you know would you fall though you know and if you see the prophets when you read the, the scriptures and you see what the lord uh put his men through the best example being job one of the ultimate, you know, examples, all right, how, you know, see how these men go through it. And that's why the Lord left us examples in these scriptures, man, all right? That's why the Lord put certain men through things and left these examples, all right, that we may look and learn, like, look like, oh, man, that's how this brother dealt with it, all right? This brother's been through it, you know, you know what I'm saying? This brother's been through it, he know what it's like, he did this, he went about it this way, he went about it that way. So the Lord said, look, I'm not just going to do y'all dirty, I'm going to leave examples, I'm going to leave it, I'm going to leave templates in this book that shall be read forever, all right, of how to go through things when I bring it upon you. And one a reoccurring theme is the Lord loves supplication. He loves um, a broken contrary heart. He loves when a, a, a man has gone through something and fall upon him and come to him. Just like how you would love, you know, like you, you want your woman to cry on your, sh on your shoulders. It ain't the same when you don't cry on your woman's shoulders. That's no. But when a woman comes to you and she cries on your shoulders, as a man, it, for support, it make you feel good because she see you as, in a, a, as a rock. Like, you know, I'm going through shit, I can't bear it, but you always a rock, you're always sturdy, you're always somebody I could go to. Well, Israel is likened unto a calmly and delicate woman. In fact, not only just any woman, we're the most size as wise, man. And he's the husband, all right? In marriage, joint two, we're joint to the most high. You see? That's how, that's the idea of us worshiping other gods, as it says in the book of um, Wisdom of Solomon, uh, I believe the 12th chapter and the 14th verse, that the um, the devising of idols is the beginning of spiritual fornication, all right? That's what it's going into, because we're supposed to be the most sized woman, but if we look to another higher power, for example, a Jacob locks up, he goes into Islam and Muslim and shit, whatever, and seek Buddha, all right? That's, that's spiritual fornication. Now, the most sized ones, when you go through shit, what she's putting us through in the first place, you call on him. Hey, Lord, get me through this bubble kasha, man. Shit look dire. You know, Lord, increase my faith. You know, you about shimmy al-shah barak ya'ad. Aynara ka, watas a dakra ka. You know, a humble, a humble spirit, a righteous spirit. You know, yakal, bracha, endure spirit. You know, a spirit to endure, chasad, mercy. It's, it's very important that you, you know, brothers, you know, you might not be fluent in the Hebrew, but some of these things that you're really asking for and yearning for, whether it's faith, which is the Hebrew, I'm a one, you have to look up the Hebrew words for it because it has more force in it, you know? You have to know certain prayers in Hebrew, especially prayers dealing with uplifting your spirit, man, all right? And for endurance. Because without prayer and supplication and faith in Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh you're not going to last in this thing, man, you know? It's going to be, quote unquote, too much for you. You're going to either have a problem with the trials and tribulations. You're going to have a problem with order. You're going to start getting willful. All these other things, man. Satan's just going to have a field day. If you're not praying and calling Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, all right, you might talk shit about the brotherhood and I don't like this brother. The demons are wrap, mind, wrap circles around your mind if you're not praying, all right, to Yahweh Bashim Yahshah for a stronger mind and these, these other things, man. You know? How about Shimmy Asha Barak Yakra Abim Khazak? More strength. You know? Or Abim Rapayim. More healing. Or Abim Salakim. More forgiveness. Or Abim Ahabim. More love. You know? Brothers, we gotta pray more, man. I personally set an alarm three times a day to pray, man. Shit, the, the alarm goes off. I stop everything I'm doing. I'm just praying. You know? Which is, a, which is a part of our custom, 
All right? You pay, um, was it a, the third hour, the ninth hour, the sixth hour? Okay, that's in our custody. Or, um, let's not get the sixth hour, the third hour, and the ninth hour. Evening, um, evening, day, and night, I believe. But those three particular hours, you know, right now, I've set my mind, all right? But, it don't, you know, whenever you set your time up, you know, you have your time, you know, you have your work schedule, you know, let me put this prayer, you know, or maybe I go on lunch, make sure I put my alarm to pray, you know? See what I'm saying? Because that's what's going to keep us firm and stable, all right, in these particular jams and trials and tribulations and adversities that we go through, man. All right? Prayer and faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahshan out. Always have faith, man. Always, always have faith that Yahweh Bashim Yahshan will make a way for his men, man. No matter what the situation seems like. So for you brothers that's going out there and this lesson resonate with you, Amen. Well, that's the spirit of the Lord. And just know through the spirit of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai, that the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai is going to make a way, man. So with that, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Machak Dash, the blinds to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, True Well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there, man. You are to the docking. Stay strong. Shalom.